Let's take a look at the structure of the digestive tract wall. I'm going to make another one of my fabulous drawings, so you're welcome to draw along as well. If we were to go through the digestive tract at any point and do a cross section, like cutting across the esophagus or across the small intestine or across the large intestine, we would see the same layers to the digestive tract wall. This particular uh, drawing is of the small intestine, while the microscope photograph next to it is from the esophagus. In either case, since we're looking at the digestive tract, there has to be a space, an opening in the middle, or a lumen. The lumen is what contains the food during the whole process. The innermost layer of the digestive tract wall is called the mucosa. And the mucosa is actually made up of three different layers of tissue. The innermost layer is a layer of epithelium. The epithelium varies depending on which organs we're looking at. If we're looking at the mouth and the esophagus, we have stratified squamous epithelium. And that's because these areas have a large amount of friction with the food rubbing down them, and they need the protection of many layers of cells. If we go down into areas like the stomach and the small intestine and the large intestine, where secretion of enzymes and absorption of nutrients is more important, there we find simple columnar epithelium, or a single layer of tall cells. Deep to that epithelial layer, we have a little layer of connective tissue called the lamina propria. The lamina propria, this little layer of connective tissue, contains the blood vessels that are going to be absorbing the nutrients out of the lumen of the small intestine and transporting them to the rest of the body. It also contains lymphatic vessels, which are important for absorbing fats, as well as nerves and glands, and also malt. Remember malt, the mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue? That's found in the lamina propria to help protect on the digestive tract from pathogens that are coming in on your food. The next layer that's still part of the mucosa is called the muscularis mucosae. This is a thin layer of smooth muscle that can contract to either expel the contents of the glands or to help increase contact of the mucosa with the food in the lumen. Together, the epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosae make up the mucosa. If we go a little bit further past the mucosa, we get to an area called the submucosa. This is a thicker layer of connective tissue that helps to support the mucosa. It contains glands, um, nerves to control those glands and the muscles, and also some blood vessels for transport. Around the submucosa is what we call the muscularis externa. The muscularis externa is made up of two layers of smooth muscle, and these two layers of smooth muscle go in different directions. We have one layer that's circular muscle that goes around the digestive tract, and then we have a layer of longitudinal muscle that goes along the digestive tract. So I'm going to add in those layers. So there's the circular muscle. When this muscle contracts, it constricts the digestive tract like this. The longitudinal muscle would be coming out of the board towards you, going along the digestive tract, and helps to move things along. Together, these two muscle layers, the circular muscle and the longitudinal muscle, are what make up 
the muscularis externa. In the stomach, there's a third layer of muscle in the muscularis externa that goes in an angle. It's called the oblique muscle, but we'll talk about that more when we get to the stomach. Finally, we get to the outermost layer of the digestive tract wall. And depending on where we are in the digestive tract, this layer can have different names and a different structure. If we're in the mouth or the esophagus or on the other end down in the anus, it's a layer of connective tissue called the adventitia. The adventitia helps to connect the digestive tract in those areas to the surrounding tissues. If we're looking at the stomach or the small or the large intestine, then instead of a layer of connective tissue, we have a layer called the serosa. It's one of those layers of simple squamous epithelium that allows for smooth movement because the stomach and the small and large intestine move around in your abdominal cavity and you don't want them to be causing a lot of friction against each other. So the serosa is a nice, smooth, shiny layer that allows those parts of the intestine to slide more easily against each other. Even though I've drawn the adventitia and the serosa both on this drawing, you don't have both layers um, on any specific organ. If you're looking in the mouth and the esophagus or the rectum, you would have only adventitia all the way around. If you're looking at the stomach, the small intestine, or the large intestine, it would just be serosa all the way around. If I asked you to do a drawing like this, you'll need to make sure that you pay attention to which organ I tell you that I'm looking for so you know what sort of epithelium to include and whether you should have an adventitia or a serosa.